In this video, you will learn that in two quite different ways, the burning of fossil fuels can cause our rain to become acidified. Sulfuric acid arises from the burning of coal and oil, mainly in power stations, whereas nitric acid arises from the exhaust pipes of our motor vehicles. You will also see some of the effects acid rain has on our environment. Firstly, it's important to understand that rain is naturally slightly acidic. Whilst falling to the ground, the rain dissolves carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to form carbonic acid, a weak acid giving natural rain a pH of 6. It's when we burn fossil fuels that much stronger acids get into our rain to form acid rain with a pH as low as 3. When the pH changes from 6 to 3, what do you think the acidity increases by? Two times? Three times? Ten times? A thousand times? Pause and think. Remember that each change of 1 in pH is a tenfold change in acidity, so changing from 6 to 3 is 10 times 10 times 10, or a thousand times more acidic. We'll consider sulfuric acid first. Plants need a little sulfur to grow. They obtain it from sulfates, for example potassium sulfate, found naturally in the soil. The sulfates are taken up by the plant's roots and sulfur atoms become bonded to carbon atoms in the leaves' proteins. When plants die and eventually form coal and oil over millions of years, these sulfur atoms remain bonded to the carbon atoms. The sulfur content of coal and oil is usually between 1 and 4% by weight. What do you think is produced when fossil fuels containing sulfur are burnt? Pause the video whilst you think. When the coal is burnt, the sulphur and the carbon atoms join with oxygen from the air and are released into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide. In the presence of sunlight, a photochemical reaction will take place where sulphur dioxide reacts with more oxygen to form sulphur trioxide. This dissolves in the rainwater, forming sulfuric acid. Let's now consider how nitric acid gets into the rain. In the high temperature conditions in the cylinders of our motor vehicles, a small amount of nitrogen and oxygen from the air can react. Remember that air taken in to combust the fuel is nearly 80% nitrogen, so exhaust gases from vehicles contain small but significant amounts of nitrogen oxides. Once the oxides of nitrogen are in the air, they react with more oxygen, just like we saw with sulfur dioxide, and dissolve in the rainwater to form nitric acid. If the rain falls on limestone soils which are alkaline, the acidity may be neutralized. However, if the rain lands on neutral or acid soils, or on vegetation, then it can cause damage. So why is this acidity harmful to living things? Well, living things don't grow well in acid conditions, and it's easy to demonstrate this. Soak a slice of bread in vinegar and another in pure water, leave them open for a little while, and then leave them covered for a week. You will find that the bread soaked in vinegar has not gone mouldy, whereas the other bread has. In fact, we use vinegar to preserve food in a process called pickling. This is the case because certain enzymes which are vital for growth are unable to function in acid conditions. The other main problem is in the soil. Whilst naturally occurring toxic metals such as aluminium are insoluble and therefore fairly harmless in neutral soil, they become soluble in acidic soil. They then get taken up by living things and take the place of essential metals such as zinc and iron. To add to this, the hydrogen ions in the acid rain will replace essential metal ions such as potassium, magnesium and calcium, which are normally held in the clay soil causing these essential metals to be washed deep into the subsoil away from the roots of plants. So to summarize, normal rain is slightly acidic due to the dissolved carbon dioxide, but acid rain contains sulfuric and nitric acid, making the rain a thousand times more acidic and dangerous for many living things. Sulfuric acid arises from the burning of fossil fuels containing sulfur, 
Nitric acid arises from the combustion of atmospheric oxygen and nitrogen in the high temperature conditions in the cylinders of petrol and diesel engines. Acid rain is a very dilute solution of nitric and sulfuric acids with a pH of around 4. Now we will learn about ways in which we can either make this acid rain less acidic or at the very least reduce its negative effects on our environment. Can you remember where the nitrogen came from in the nitric acid and the sulfur in the sulfuric acid? Pause and think. Well, the nitrogen came from the combination of atmospheric nitrogen and oxygen in the cylinders of motor vehicles, and the sulphur when fossil fuels containing sulphur are burnt, particularly in our power stations. Let's look at power stations in Europe. For many years, these stations have been using tall chimneys to disperse the sulphur dioxide far away, thinking that dilution was the solution to pollution. However, the acid did not get diluted, but instead was carried in the wind to Scandinavia, where it fell into Swedish lakes. Originally, people tried to neutralize the acidity by adding limestone to the lakes. This was partly successful. For example, salmon returned to some polluted rivers in Wales after the acidified lakes from which the rivers flowed were treated with lime over a number of years. A much better method is to trap the acid before it reaches the atmosphere in a process called scrubbing. The kind of scrubber we need in this case is an alkali to react with the sulphur dioxide. So either seawater, which contains a little bit of sodium carbonate, or lime, calcium oxide, is used. Can you think what reaction will occur with calcium oxide, a basic oxide, and sulphur dioxide, an acidic oxide? Calcium oxide plus sulfur dioxide makes calcium sulfite, that's CaSO3. The sulfite can be reacted with oxygen to make gypsum, calcium sulfate, CaSO4, which is the main ingredient of wall plaster. These scrubbers have greatly reduced our sulfur emissions and given many countries much cleaner air, but it does reduce the efficiency of the power station maybe by as much as 10%, thus increasing the cost of the electricity. In oil refineries, sulphur is removed from crude oil by reacting it with hydrogen. This reaction, known in industry as hydro desulfurization, takes place at high temperature with a metal catalyst to produce hydrogen sulfide, that bad egg smell and a very poisonous gas. When this purified oil is refined into various fuels, it is virtually free of sulphur. What about reducing the amount of nitric acid in rain? This time we need to put catalytic converters in the exhaust pipe of all our motor vehicles. Essentially, they convert the oxides of nitrogen back into oxygen and nitrogen. It is a pity we have to do this because we use huge amounts of fossil fuel energy getting nitrogen to react with hydrogen to produce nitrogen-rich fertilizers. With a little collector in all the exhaust pipes, we could deposit a little pile of fertilizer every time we fill the fuel tank. There's an idea for one of you young entrepreneurs. So to summarize, the best way to reduce the effects of acid rain is to prevent the oxides of sulphur and nitrogen from escaping into the atmosphere in the first place. This is done by scrubbing the exhaust fumes from power stations using lime or seawater to remove the sulphur dioxide, and by fitting catalytic converters to motor vehicle exhausts to decompose the oxides of nitrogen.